Hello and welcome to the Media Play News Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Sparkman. And I'm co-host, Charlie Showley. It's March already, uh, which is breaking my brain that the year is moving so far, so fast. Um, I guess it's just a virtue of being very busy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to start with some returning shows and streaming movies to expect this month, our, uh, you know, our monthly segment from um, Wit Media. And then we're going to poke our heads into the South Park drama between Warner Brothers and Paramount. Last, we've got some news on a new show ordered by HBO Max based on the Stephen King novel, It. But let's recap. Uh, Charlie, you see anything good this week? Nope. Uh, like you, I've been moving. Uh, so I've been really, really busy with that, putting in several hours each night, cleaning my place up in prep to like move all my stuff back in. Uh, there's been a bunch of renovation work that's been happening over the last few months, and I'm just excited to get back to... Uh, the old recording studio, and then we can regularly record in person again. Yeah. Yeah, but I was just telling Charles right before the show that there is approximately half of all the items in my entire house just in my office alone. <laughs> so I have to be really careful not to move my chair uh, in any direction because um, stuff is going to get knocked over. Uh, so nothing new. Um, I did see a couple more episodes of that South Korean reality show, physical 100. Uh, the novelty is worn off slightly. Uh, if you didn't uh, remember from last week, this is a show where they get a bunch of athletes, soldiers, MMA fighters, bodybuilders, that sort of thing to compete in a bunch of different games. And what is starting to annoy me about the show is that, Yes, it is somewhat like Squid Game, except for the killing. Um, and so that that like novelty aspect is cool. But when you have Squid Game with like all the contestants participating in a game simultaneously with this, it's mostly team based events. And so if there's five matchups of two teams against each other, you're just seeing the same event happening five times in a row which usually takes place over the course of like an episode and a half. So yeah. it's very, very samey uh, to the point where I really just want them to like speed everything up. Um, but again, it's, it's just kind of like a fun, dumb watch, um, but nothing else. How about you? Um, I, well, since I've been moving, I uh, haven't had a ton of time to watch stuff, just like kind of packing stuff every night and then also my band's going on tour in a couple weeks so i've been helping coordinate some of that but i did uh in the packing process i found so i think maybe two episodes ago i talked about watching justice league the new frontier on hbo max but in the process of packing i found my dvd uh of the new frontier and i was like well let me see because i have the two disc edition um, so I was, let me see the, uh, so I've decided that I'm getting back into physical media this year. Um, I mean, obviously I'm going to be limited by the amount of space that, that physical media takes up, but I would like to get back into collecting stuff because streaming services are unpredictable, but I did watch a bit of the, uh, 49 minute kind of making of documentary about the comic that the movie is based on as well as like adapting it to screen and like, you know, going through the process of casting and everything. And it was really interesting. I'm like, I need to watch more i need to watch more bonus features because this is uh really good yeah that's something that you really just have to like set a free afternoon aside for and marathon through like all the special features of just whatever it is you're you're watching a lot of unexpected surprises and that sort of thing uh for instance when i got dune on blu-ray uh there's a scene from the movie this is the new one not the david lynch one where the main character is just watching like a uh, like a video projector, just talking about like, oh, here's some fun facts about Arrakis, the most dangerous planet in the universe we'll be traveling to soon. And there was about 20 minutes of special features that was just more <laughs> projector films of that like kind of style. <laughs> and it was a good time. Uh, totally, totally caught off by surprise that they had that. Yeah, so um, this doing the show has um, fully sold me on the importance of uh, having my own library of physical media. Yeah, so. and in the show notes, you'll find a link to multiple Amazon affiliates. Uh, do you, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> One day. Yeah, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, you can. The show is now uh, at least partially a journey uh, with me to <laughs> expand my physical library. Let's do it. All right. Um, this week's inspiration is again the uh, Costco Scotch. Um, it's still fine, and again, only fine if it is cold. I uh, left some on the uh, coffee table. I uh, returned to that glass the following morning, and it was not good at room temperature. <laughs> so, uh, better than me, I have nothing because I did not expect to be recording in my house. Uh, so I have no alcohol here right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to do it sober. Uh, no inspiration at all, uh, I should say. <laughs> uh, but let's let's move into the upcoming shows and movies for March. So from Whip Media, uh, they've once again compiled the month's um, most anticipated shows. Uh, we're going to start with something coming to CBS. They are debuting a series, uh, True Lies, based on the 1994 James Cameron action comedy featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis. And that's the movie with them. They are not bringing those actors back for the show. Uh, that's actually a movie that is kind of like in the back of my head on, I got to get around to watching this simply because it's James Cameron pre everything people know him for with the exception yeah. of the first Terminator. Um, but another new show, this kind of caught my eye, uh, made me think of you. It's coming to the CW and you know, you're going to know all about this, Charles, since you're you know, <laughs> Mr. Superhero knowledge. Uh, Gotham Knights. So, Charles, should we be excited for this? Um, I'm going to just be real up front. Probably not. Uh -oh. um, I, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm uh, like, as mentioned on the show, I'm a big proponent of um, TV superhero media. Um, I, like I said, I watched uh, Smallville all the way through. Um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the CW Arrowverse shows. Uh, I'm several years behind on all of them now, but I was enjoying them. You know, when I was watching them on a weekly basis. And uh, this one is, I believe, loosely based on the uh, recent video game of the same name. And the game is reportedly not that great. And this show was put into production before the takeover of uh, DC Media, DC Comics Media by James Gunn and Peter Safran. So um, I don't have a ton of faith in this show being good, but I will watch it and I'm open to being pleasantly surprised. Um, just a little bit of background on the Gotham Knights, like concept, like the premise of this show and, and or game is uh, Batman is dead. So Nightwing, who uh, was the first Robin, uh, Batgirl, Red Hood, who was the second Robin who died and came back to life. And uh, Tim Drake, the third Robin, um, step up to keep Gotham together uh, after the death of Batman. So it's an interesting idea to have like a Batman show, like a Batman related show that doesn't actually feature Batman in it. Um, not, not the first time that's been done, but like it is an interesting concept. And so um, I think if the production values are there and uh, the writing is at least on par with like the flash and arrow, which can be very dumb at times, but in a fun way, um, I think it, it's the one season that it's going to get will probably be enjoyable. <laughs> okay. Well, I think it's coming out in a couple weeks, so we'll have to update the listeners on that. When it does. I'll definitely report back. Uh, so those are new shows, but among returning shows are the new season of the Mandalorian to Disney yeah, plus. Uh, and the final season of Succession to HBO Max. No, no, yeah, baby, for that. I have not watched Succession, but now that I know that it's ending. Uh, <laughs> yes, it made yeah. it. It made it all the way to a satisfactory conclusion. Uh, I have some comments on that that I'll get into in a second, but let's touch on The Mandalorian real quick. Uh, I haven't seen any of it except for the pilot. I know people lose their minds over it. And from like a production point of view, yes, it looks very good just as like personal preferences and taste. I don't really care too much for it anymore. Uh, but apparently the titular hero and his sidekick, Baby Yoda, have been reunited um, at the end of season two. 
they brought back a deep fake Mark Hamill to spirit away baby Yoda to Jedi training. trained. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's a plot point that they were reunited uh, that happened apparently from a completely different show, uh, which was the Boba Fett's season. Uh, I don't actually know if they renewed that, but I know that a ton of people kind of just made fun of it to no end. Yeah, I watched uh, one and a half episodes and just never got back to it. Yeah, um, I was kind of following the chatter about it as it was airing. And a lot of people thought it was hilarious that halfway through the season, Mandalorian shows up and then the show basically becomes a micro season of Mandalorian (laughs) for a few episodes. Uh, So this really reminded me of a similar thing that the Star Wars universe pulled with episode nine where Ugh. Palpatine was unexpectedly back and somehow Palpatine has returned. Yeah. Is yeah. And if you wanted to straight hear, up line. yeah, if you wanted to hear the kind of like in universe lore of how exactly that happened, uh, you had to turn to the video game Fortnite, where apparently there was a broadcast from Palpatine um, specifically detailing how he had returned uh, so I know such that, a baffling decision. I know. I know that Fortnite is like super popular, but like, I just want to see the Venn diagram between avid players of Fortnite and people who still care about star Wars lore. Right. Cause like when I was 12 or whatever, when, when episodes one, two and three came out, I didn't really care about, Oh, now what? what's the actual planet that Yoda is from? And what's his relationship to count Dooku? It's Ooh, count Dooku has a curved lightsaber and I'm seeing Yoda fight for the first time. This is awesome. (laughs) Uh, But I'm sure a lot of people are happy that Mandalorian is back as for succession. This is another show that a completely different demographic loses their minds over. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. But from what I've seen of its, three seasons and now it's final fourth season that have come out. The show seems to be about three entitled 0.1 percenters trying to gain control of their elderly father's conglomerate. And if that show spent say the first season focusing on that and then delving into some character development about unrelated stuff in later seasons, then that would be cool. But I just saw a few episodes of the first season and thought, okay, well, trying to get control of the company. And then I see some out of context clip from season three at the time. And the same three people are still trying to get control of the company. So my question is, what have they been doing this whole time? (laughs) I know that it's like a really sort of realistic and deep, like political power struggle type of show with very well fleshed out characters They're just all different flavors of intolerable to me. Um, But again, now that the show's wrapping up, maybe I can just marathon through the whole thing because it is very well made. It's just not something that motivated me to watch it as it was coming out. Um, The last comment that I'm going to leave off with it is from a another outsider's perspective. Uh, They put out a tweet about succession saying something to the effect of, People will share an image of succession saying how good that one scene is. And the scene in question looks like a stock photo of a business meeting. (laughs) And it is hilarious how on point that comment is. Uh, But, you know, I that that's all I have on that. In six months, I'll remember that succession is concluded and then I'll I'll revisit it. But until then. eh. Yeah, there's a. There's one other and like there's one more show that's uh coming back. Actually, it might not be on this list because it comes back. No. It might not be on the list because it comes back before the end of February. But um the Showtime show uh Party Down is returning. Oh my god. Are you serious? It's out and, finally. And man, I've been seeing it's one of like the handful of shows I've been seeing ads for. And, uh, man, yeah, it, it's cause it just came out. Okay. So. Like me, the big cynic of the show and you, the starry eyed foil, like, I'm not kidding. I have been looking forward to this revival for like 
two years, if not longer. Whenever they announced it, I was like, yeah. I can't believe they're bringing the show back. 13 years, man. That's crazy. But yeah, uh, six issue. Yeah, it was announced in the or six episode revival um, just started, just came out on the 24th. So a couple days ago as of recording. Okay. I, um, I'm literally like, I have my my finger over the stop <laughs> recording button because I'm just going to cancel this and we're going to release this as is. I'm just going to rush home. I'm not going to pack anything to bring it back in. I'm just going to watch all of that show. But let's move on to the next news item. What do we have? All right. Next up, a content licensing lawsuit has been filed against Paramount by Warner Brothers Discovery. The long and short of it is that Warner paid $500 million for 30 episodes of South Park to be produced for it. And up to this point, only 14 episodes have been released. Uh, what's funny is that those 14 episodes make up South Park seasons 24, 25 and 26. But Paramount itself has signed a totally separate $900 million contract with the South Park creators to produce and host 14 more episodes of season 27 through 30 exclusively on Paramount Plus. Uh, Paramount counter alleges Warner hasn't paid the licensing fees it's owed. It's a huge mess and highlights the Wild West that is content licensing on streaming platforms. Uh, I have no idea where to start with this. Yeah, I I remember when I remember seeing because like uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, like uh, was it a lot of the Comedy Central stuff was in like their involved like their merger so like i remember south park being on hbo max being like one of the selling points at the beginning but then also paramount got the uh the covid specials <laughs> yep at the same time so I was like wait well who has the rights to south park on streaming <laughs> yeah and- you can also watch it on hulu <sighs> yeah So South Park itself, the creators, they made a two part like mega episode uh, called The Streaming Wars. Um, So I saw this when it first came out on Paramount Plus, not HBO. Um, If I remember right, the premise for those episodes was Colorado was suffering from a drought due to global warming and the characters of the show they're seeking to divert some water from the mountains down to the cities via uh, waterways or uh, streams, if you will. And so in an effort to get access to these streams, different businesses around the state start bidding against each other uh, for access in kind of like a competition or, or like a, a war with each other you might be able to say a war for these streaming services like a streaming war is what i'm trying to say do you get what i'm saying charles yes i get it it's very it's very south park yeah so it it followed the typical south park formula of they have a funny cutting insightful joke about you know what's going on in the world currently and then beat that joke to death over the course of like an hour and a half. So <laughs> ha ha funny at first, but then by the end, I thought I mean, this, this could have been a single episode. <laughs> let's yeah. let's not drag this out longer than it has to. It's on its 28th season. It's been dragged out pretty far. Yeah, it is obscene. I remember an ad for South park um, with some kid in his parents' living room watching like, you know, season two or three of South Park. And then he becomes a teenager and he's watching more recent episodes of South Park. And then he's an adult and he's watching it. And then the last scene is the adult holding like his own child watching like, oh, and now the new season of South Park is coming out. And I believe that ad was like eight years ago. Jesus. <laughs> so that's just going to tell you like how long the show has been running. Because yeah, I was just gonna say like that's that's just us generationally. Because I remember when South Park started, and my Christian parents were very up in arms about it. <laughs> and then a f- decade passes, and it's like, well, I have cable in my room, and I can watch whatever I want, and I watch South Park. And then a f- it's been a further decade, and South Park is like still going. And because of like their like how they like set up like their animation like framework. Is they can like get an episode out like like in less than seventy two hours I think, 
Yeah, they made a documentary about that. Uh, I'm trying to remember if we even talked about it before, but um, again, it's just like within a week or just a few days, they're able to crank out an episode. Um, yeah, which like does help being like, you know, keeping very topical, but um, it's just it it does feel uh, very uh, and I am not a uh, I haven't watched The Simpsons either. Um I've definitely seen more South Park than The Simpsons, uh, but it feels very Simpsons esque. And like this show has been going on for an incredible amount of time. And uh, a lot of people are asking why. <laughs> yeah, I will say that I haven't kept up with either of those shows that closely. Like I saw the South Park specials and then some random episodes here or there. And it's pretty good. It's good, not great. Uh, of the modern Simpsons I've seen, uh, I hate it. And uh, so I guess South Park has aged slightly better, uh, which is ironic considering how sort of counterculture they were in like their single digit seasons. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll we'll see where they end God, up. They're... It's it's funny that this lawsuit is as big of a mess as it is, because like at first you hear. Well, you know, Warner paid half a billion dollars for access to the entire South Park back catalog and all these new episodes that Paramount never made. But if what Paramount is saying is true, then they didn't make them because Warner didn't pay them. (laughs) So, you know, one way or another, South Park is going to end up on a streaming service somewhere. People can't get rid of it. It was in the article. This is um, coming from it's held up as desirable as a show as stuff like big bang theory, the office and friends. And of that quartet of shows, South park is the only show still making stuff. Yeah. Which like is, it's crazy to think about, but like just cause I don't enjoy it. Doesn't mean it's not like still very culturally relevant. Like my last roommate, um, kept up with South Park, watched it all the time. I frequently come home to her watching South Park, like new episodes of South Park and also old episodes of South Park. So like, I guess it's like interesting when you like, you kind of check out of any given thing and then you read, you check back in on it and it's like, Oh, this is a cultural milestone for a lot of people still. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see what happens there. Cause uh, that it's almost laughable that, these two major streaming services just like can't agree on who paid for what and to what amount, but either way, um, you know, shout out to Matt and Trey, uh, getting nearly $2 billion from these two companies. (laughs) All right, let's move on. Um, but not away from HBO max. It's been announced that welcome to dairy will be produced and released on the service based on the most recent theatrical release of It and It Chapter 2. The series has been developed for TV by the original filmmakers of the movies, who will also be directing multiple episodes. The working title, Welcome to Dairy, will serve as a prequel series to the movies and expand on the universe. Uh, So I found this and was immediately like, this is interesting. Um, I used to be a huge Stephen King fan. I read all of his Dark Tower books lots of the connected books, um, even some of the more like modern stuff and uh, what a casual reader may not know, just like for someone who walks into Barnes and Noble every six months and, Oh look, there's another Stephen King book. (laughs) How does he maintain this, this output? Um, But uh, what you may not know is that a lot of his books share a loosely connected universe. Uh, So the town that it takes place in Derry frequently reappears in multiple unrelated books as just like a general catch all undesirable place. And the it creature itself has lore of its own that shares common themes and powers from monsters of Stephen King's other books. Um, There's even some allusions and nods to like monsters and other books being the exact same creature that shows up in it. It's just like, a shapeshifter and happens to be a clown in it, but it's something else in say one of the dark tower books. Interesting. So, um, I haven't seen the new movies, 
uh, first off, because they look very scary. They do look very scary. Yeah. Um, but they look like they have kind of like a style to them that's beyond simply we're going to jump scare you. Um, it's like they're they're imaginative with the way that the creature in it scares the audience. It's, yeah. It's just like there's that mental hurdle I have to get over of. All right. So, you know, it's uh, noon. The sun is like coming in through the window and directly hitting my TV. And I'm going to I'm going to fire up it and see how this is. Um, the the one difference between this and kind of like the TV movie series that came out like 30 years ago or so is that the it monster in the current movies seem to be a lot more scary leaning than the one in the original. And that was kind of like, uh, his affect was I'm a goofy clown. And then every once in a while he would kind of turn and you would get a glimpse into kind of like this bottomless depth of evil that this creature actually is. And the way that that actor portrayed that was like really, really memorable. Even if the, movie itself was kind of weak especially the ending so given that you know i was super into stephen king and the filmmakers are attached to this show and the movies they made were actually like really really competently done and had like a visual style to them yeah um i'm kind of rooting for this show to do well um first because again it's like the people who made the movies are working on the show so you're going to have a consistent visual language yeah and there's a lot of available source material that they can sample from assuming that you know copyright doesn't get in the way of any of that so you know there's um the rings of power show that came out on amazon but they didn't have the rights to allude to most of the stuff that people like Lord of the Rings for. Mm -hmm. So if for this show, all they have access to is it, you know, clown doing some scary supernatural stuff is going to get old pretty quick. But if they can tie it to some other Stephen King stuff, then they've got an insane amount of stuff they could, they could possibly show. Yeah, and Stephen King seems like he's like on board, even though like not all of the adaptations of his work have gone super well. He does seem like cool with working with adaptations. So I can imagine a version of this that like is able to play a little looser with some of the extended universe. But, yeah. So like have you do you know the story of it at all, other than there's yeah. a clown? Yeah, I know the story. I'm just too uh, much of a baby to watch the films. <laughs> yeah, what I liked is when the first movie came out, all the trailers just showed the kids and trying to survive this clown uh, killing them or eating them, whatever it does. Bad things. Um, and then because I never watched the movie, I didn't hear about this until a few months after it had come out. But the movie concluded with end of part one or something like that. But none yeah. of the promotion implied that it was going to be a part one. It was simply we're telling the first half of the story because in the story itself, you have a small group of kids that are trying to survive this killer clown. And then it fast forwards 20 or so years and the kids now adults all return to the the town to find that the clown has come back. You know, they thought they had vanquished it at the end of, well, at the end of the movie. Uh, but surprise, he's back. Um, this, this contrasts with the original telling where I'm pretty sure the story mostly followed the adults. And then each adult, as they were introduced, it would go into a flashback of, here's my experience with the clown when I was a kid. And it was just kind of like yo-yoing back and forth. Yeah. So again, that kind of like dedication to, yes, we're going to make a two parter, but we're not going to tell anybody at all. And we're actually going to pull it off. Um, makes me hopeful for this. 
Uh, but there's very little news on this. It's just been announced that it is going to be produced. Yeah, I mean, it worked for uh, it worked out for Peacemaker, you know, adapting a story from a film, um, ext- like expanding on a film's universe in the form of a uh, a mini series. So, yeah. Well, do you remember how Limitless got a TV adaptation? I sure do. <laughs> I remember that bad movie and equally bad uh, TV show. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I hear a movie is getting a show, I immediately think to something like that, but because of all the other stuff that I was just talking about, this could be good. And then, uh, lastly, speaking of movies to streaming, but specifically on HBO max, there's a Dune property called Dune, the sisterhood, uh, which is currently in production. Um, I haven't followed it. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, hasn't it been in production for a while? Because I remember it was like announced alongside like the plan for Dune, like for this franchise as it exists now. Yeah, based on its Wikipedia page, there's been a lot of production road bumps with producers and showrunners and directors jumping in and out like the director of the movie was going to direct the pilot and then possibly some other episodes. But due to his you know time being allocated for dune part two uh he had to drop out uh but at least as of late november of last year it is officially um under production so what's before i get too deep into dune lore um the overall plot of the show is that it's going to take place ten thousand years before the movie does and within dune history um during that specific time period that's around the time when uh humanity is in a war against ai and uh, vanquishing ai leads to humans banning computers so there could very well be a subplot of the show that deals with yeah we're trying to fight this war for the survival of our species against uh, cyborgs and AI and high concept sci-fi stuff like that. And then we get Mintats out of that. Yeah. Uh, I, Dune is like a giant rabbit hole. It's like sci-fi Lord of the Rings almost. Um, oh, that's, that's, a, that's an apt comparison. But like my favorite thing about Dune, just you know, without getting too, too into it, because this could just become a Dune podcast <laughs> if we wanted it to, um, is that it's kind of like by the nature of how uh, like spice works and like what how that like elevates consciousness and everything, um, the books are technically like become a meta narrative of themselves. Like the <laughs> like <laughs> Paul becomes aware that he's like in a like not in a book but like there are other beings observing him. Is like <laughs> and like the other beings are us, the readers. So. It's a it's a fun it's a fun time. I think uh, there's like a lot of cool stuff to be done with Dune, but I wonder just how much of that is palatable um, in the form of a visual media. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's something that I have to read more of because um, I've never finished Dune, and now I don't want to because it's going to spoil the second movie for me. Like <laughs> I have a very very vague idea on what happens. I just don't know any specifics at all, and what I think is funny is that this like Lord of the Rings, I've never finished those books either, but the lore of the movies is really compelling. Uh, but anyway, well, th- this Charlie, is not you a should do- definitely, you should definitely read Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah, that's a I thing know you should do. I know I should, or I could just rewatch the extended editions again. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> But um, yeah, also uh, read Dune after. I mean, you can wait till after the second one comes out. Dune's not going anywhere. And honestly, only read the first two um, if you don't want to, like, go crazy. Um, I've only read the first one and I've read about the uh, other nine books or however many there are. Oh, there's more than that. (laughs) Yeah, I'm also like I'm interested. Like, I'm definitely interested in like the ex- this expanded universe around the current Dune franchise. I think the, the uh, there are a lot of very cool concepts introduced 
uh, in Dune. And it'd be very cool to see them in another medium. It's not a bunch of books that are 500 pages long each. But until I see um, a man encased in uh, worms and then becoming a giant worm and then living for an additional 10,000 years, um, I'll, I don't think we'll ever reach the true apex of what Dune could be. Yeah, and if that didn't make any sense to you, too bad. We will not elaborate. <laughs> Figure it out on your own. All right, that's going to wrap us up for this week. You can find links to these articles in the show notes and at mediaplaynews.com. You can subscribe to the site's mailing list using the subscription link in the notes. You can email us directly at mediaplaynewspodcast at gmail.com to have your comment feature on the show or find us on our Twitter account at podcastmpn. If you like the show, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it. I'm Charles Parkman. I'm Charlie Shirley. And we will see you next week.